couple of weeks ago, I was contacted by a new tool company by the name of Going Make, um, trying to get in kind of woodpecker quality tools. And they offered to send me some to try in my shop. And I took them up on their offer. And um, today we're going to go through each and every one with a fine tooth comb and just see exactly how they look, how they perform. And um, you know, give you a quick look at them. I'll be using them in my shop for a while. The first one is this uh, pretty neat 3D square, and you can see it has uh, 1 16th of an inch spacing there for drawing lines and stuff. So first, let's put a precision. This is a calibrated square, and just a little, looks like it's off a little bit. We'll measure this all in a second. We'll go through them with a fine tooth comb. But first, um, just want to show you, you have to use these little fine 0.5 millimeter lead pencils with them to get um, precision lines and the spacing on them is very easy to uh, determine and this one here is at 1 16th of an inch spaces so you know if you want to index things or draw lines or do layouts it's really a you know it's really a nice setup i i think this is going to be really handy in the shop and then it's got this pin that comes with it that has no case or anything that just comes with it loosely but you use that in these little holes here in the side to index common angles um i have not checked the accuracy i will you know in future videos go through all that stuff but they look to be fairly accurate um i think they'd be really good for laying out corners of frames and stuff like that and multi-angle pieces and there you can see the quality of it the finish of it is exceptional and the um engraving on it is just you know that white engraving really sticks out and makes it easy to read even for my old eyes and, you know i you know this is where this really shines is if you're going to be marking around corners and trying to lay out things around a 3d profile and um it does it does have just a tiny, tiny bit of discrepancy in it. I think it's about the same as all my other woodworking tools when you look at it. Let's take and throw a feeler gauge in there against the precision square and see what it comes out at. Okay, so that's, that's out there about 0 0.003 across the length of it. Total, and uh, there's a piece going up where it's actually... Uh, there are two pieces screwed together here, so I'm not sure if I could tighten the screws and, you know, solve this a little bit. But it's not that much, but uh, that one's off 0.007 out of square now across that lane. So it's not perfect. It's, you know, it's a woodworking quality. It's not a machinist quality, but you can see uh, the rest of it is just fit and finish. It's just beautiful. Really, um, really nice little square. Um, it's going to be handy. All right, next item we're going to look at is a thin rip setup for my table saw. I've always wanted to get one of these things, and I've used just sticks and stuff that have a tendency to bind up. And, oh, this thing is beautiful. Look at the quality of it. Um, okay, it's a really nice T-nut lockdowns. It's a one-way bearing, so it should help with kickbacks. And it comes with extra fittings for different size saw slots. Actually, they're three quarter of an inch, but if you don't have the T slot, you're going to have to use that one. And then some T bolts for narrower stuff. I'll show you that in a second, how that all works. But that's what it looks like. Let's go over and put it on this saw. And I do have the T slots, and that's why I really, you know, I really like this because it locks solid into them uh, perfectly sized and just have to. Get them lined up there. And then you lock it down in front of the blade. Never go even with the blade. Always be in front of the blade with something like this. And the adjustments, that thing is just so solid when it's in there. It's not going to move when you move the fence up against it and stuff. So try it. See how it works. So first thing you do is locate it the thickness that you want of the cuts, about an eighth inch. And then I'm just going to, you know, start the saw up. Now, I've got the guard off the saw because I want you to be able to see what's going on here. But, you know, actually, you should have a guard on be using that. So there's the first cut. You see no binding or anything. Works good. So now for the next cut, you just uh, put it up against the fence. Index fence over. Lock it until you get a nice fit there. And just cut. Uh, this 
eliminates the fact the um, binding and kickback if you try cutting them on a narrow you know side against the fence that's really dangerous so this is the way to go and I think this will be a really highly used item in my shop now so I've got some uh, laminated handles and stuff I want to make up I'll show you in a second so there they are you know all perfectly perfect sized um, really really nice a great way to cut strips like this and stuff safely I think this thing's a winner. It really is beautiful. All right, so let's just pull this out and uh, try it with the other one. Now, some people don't have T slot, so I've got the three-quarter inch slot with the T slot. So, but you know, I should lock in it in mine too. So just let's put that other fitting on the bottom there and tighten these handles up. And again, you can see the um, lock right in there. No problem. So I guess as long as you've got a three quarter inch quarter inch um, guide slot there, you're good to go with this. Really amazing how nice they lock. Some of these things that expand out are really tough to use. And again, this is you know I want to cut strips to be able to laminate up some bent handles and stuff. So I'll make a form to glue them together, and this is going to work perfect. Really going to be a, a great addition. Hey. Figured I'd show you this does work in like uh, the small T-Track slots. I've got them on my router table too. So let's just put the T-Tracks on there. And again, it uh, it locks right in them too. So, uh, you know, pretty much it'll fit any application, even if you do have a smaller saw with just the, um, the T-slots in it. And it does come with a couple of Allen wrenches to make some adjustments and actually remove the bearing if you have to. Now the next item is uh, it's a set of 90 degree corner clamps. Um, these look really nice and again you can see the packaging is great. The finish on these things is just amazing. Um, all the engraving and stuff is just so easy to read. I don't know whether it's just the contrast or the size of it or what but it worked good for me. And everything you know again it looks really nice. First thing I notice though is something something a little bit off here. You can see one of them rocks, one of them not perfect. So it looks like there is a little bit of an issue with one. We'll get we'll go through and check that out and I'll show you exactly what it is. But just um I don't know this engraving this all seems to be in there, so it doesn't look like it's something that's gonna rub off over time either. It's um you know it's well in there. Just just nice. Um, so let's uh, get the uh, precision square out, check them. And this one here is actually, this one's actually perfect. Um, perfectly square and that edge is perfectly straight. And the other one here has some issues. Um, first of all, you can see it's kind of rounded on that. It's not quite perfectly straight. I don't know what it is, but um, must have been something in the manufacturing process. I got hit or something, and it does it's out of square slightly. Not a lot, just a little bit, probably within a woodworking tolerance. Let's see, 0.015 it's only out by, so it's really not out by that much. It's you know definitely within a tolerance for woodworking tools. Um and let's show you how it works now that what i really like about these are my old box how to use these plastic blocks just kind of have nothing to hold them in place when you're trying to set them up and stuff this one here you just drop in place and it's got those nice lips that that hold it in place and then these clamps here they're kind of actually i like the squeeze type clamps better but these do work good um you just have to Spend a little time, you know, screwing them. It does take a little bit of time to, to get them to the thickness you need. If you're going to use multi, you know, the same thickness over and over again, you can keep them pretty much well adjusted. And what you want to do is keep them up on the, uh, with that bottom of that angle section, even with the bottom of the fixture there. I'll show you here. You can see I've got that sticking down there, and I'm just going to pull that up right there so it's about you know flush so there they are um you know they're holding the corner they work good they clamp good uh 
not quite 100% perfectly square in that one, but it's, it's close enough for woodworking, I think. And it would be nice if there was a little stop on these clamps so you could just drop them down and, you know, stop them there. But anyhow, let's go on to the next tool. Now, this is a set of hold-down clamps for my bench, which I was really excited to get. Um, always, you never have enough of these hold-down clamps when you're doing layouts and stuff. These things are really, you know, they're really sexy looking. They're like Art Deco or something like that. And uh, there is a, the, the vertical shaft there. You can take that little thumb screw out and slide it up and down. But actually, it's threaded, so you can just screw it thread it up and down as you're going and then tighten that brass screw once you're at the proper location. Again, beautiful finish and everything else. So let's try it here. I'll screw that down so that the flange is up against my bench top. And I've got the three quarter inch dog holes in my bench top. These are four. And first thing I notice is that when you turn that thing, that, that base is the fixed on it and it shifts it off the board tries to move it and at the same time they don't grab on my top so you can see that that tries to move it and it it screws right out it won't lock on my top uh, for some reason and look at that it's smooth just some really super fine things that you can't really see and this here is actually fixed to that so that's a problem i think so all my other dog clamps have these uh some kind of serrated or you know just a roughness in there to grab on the hole and keep it from pulling out so i guess that's what i'm going to have to do to these to make them work with my bench i'll take it out in the shop and i'll put a narrow on those two sections and that should lock good so i figured well maybe these are made for three quarter inch tops um uh, i think a lot of those festo tops and stuff are three quarter inch so Again, I've drilled a three-quarter inch hole in a piece of plywood. And you can see if you tighten it, it shifts, but um, didn't really want to start on its own. But if I force it over on angle there, you can see it will it will stay in lock. So I guess either more for a three-quarter inch um, top. But like I said, I'm going to just put a knurl on the, that section that goes down and uh, make them work with my top too. Actually, they're really beautiful um, clamps. I, you know, just I like the look of them, finish of them and everything. But you know, this one does this does have a couple of issues that I'm going to work on. I'm surprised that they came smooth. I've never seen a smooth set like that before. Maybe I just got one that was a uh, pre-production or something. I don't know. But it's an easy fix for me. I know not everybody has a knurling tool. In this, I'll probably just loosen that screw up a little bit, put some Loctite to keep it loose when you tighten it. So it flip, so that'll swivel a little bit. And there is another set of holes, so you can move it inboard also. So that's what they look like. Um, you know, really beautiful little clamps, but need some work. Okay, now here's another one I was really excited about when I saw it. Um, it's a T-square, and I've often thought about buying one of these, but I just didn't want to spend the money on it. Um, you know, like the woodpeckers and other ones are also expensive, where this one's affordable. So everything they ship has good instructions and does come packaged well, you can see. And this is just a beautiful ruler. It's so easy to read. I don't know. It's just there. Maybe it's a text they used or something, but... Um, just, uh, you know, really easy on the eyes. Works good, and all the hardware is included. Let's put it on my router table. It looks flat that way. Uh, it's got just a hair of a bow the other way, it looks like. I'll double check it with a straight edge. And there you can see a little bit up in the middle, and when I flip it the other way, um, it's got a little bit of a rock. So there is just a... Probably, you know, not much, maybe maybe one or two thousandths of a uh, bow over the length of it. And then you put it together and you set it on some pins. And there you can see when you set it on those pins, it's supposed to be tight, I thought, but it actually rocks. So I'm not quite sure about that. And then in the instructions, they tell you to tighten the two screws on this end first. 
Now, I'm going to tell you, these screws have some kind of finish in the hole that makes it hard to get the wrench in the, to tighten them. I wound up getting a, a little bit bigger wrench that, you know, I was able to, to put, put more force on it and fit it in there. But I tightened those two screws first and then went back and put in the other ones like the instructions say. Tighten them up good. And this one does have 132nd markings on it, so it's really beautiful. Um, everything lines up perfect. You can see the first index here lines right up with that edge. And let's put the square on it. Okay, so let's get a, the feeler gauges here just to you know double check. I like to check everything. I, I mean, most woodworking tools are not quite perfect. So that's got about a 0.002 out of square on it. And if that's the truth, there should be 0.002 on the bottom corner there, which it is. So it's actually the joint where they're screwed together that's off a little bit. So I figured I'd screw on loosen these screws and try every other combination I could of pulling it up against the square and tightening it and get it straight but i could not get it perfect i will tell you um i think what i'm going to do is i'm just going to replace those screws maybe with something that's adjustable button heads or something and then drill pin holes in it to lock it once i get it because this is just such a beautiful ruler it would be nice if it did lock together perfect but you know i guess that's a, the price you pay for getting um for saving a lot of money So it's still, no matter what I did, I couldn't get it perfect. Actually, I got it worse there. So um, I played with it, and it's just got to be pinned overall. But it does have a nice lip to set on your board. I really like that, and it's very easy to read. And there's one thirty second of an inch indexing holes for layouts, which really, I think, are going to be handy. Actually, a regular pencil will not work in them. I use a lot of these 0.5 millimeter lead pencils anyway, and they fit perfect and they're precision. They give you a precision line, but they don't rock around in the hole. And this index is uh, very easy to read the indexing the way they put it across the ruler too. They went across the ruler with four different, um, four different uh, 30 seconds as you go. So it's easy to find and a really great layout tool, I think. Okay, so next up is the Going Make It a Sharpening Kit. It's a sharpening guide kit and uh, comes with excellent instructions like everything that they sell. I mean, first grade instructions I've seen with products. And it comes in a really nice little box here for storage. And it's basically a guide for holding the angle on your chisels and plane blades and stuff to um, hone them comes with some longer rollers there. I'll show you in a second what they're for. And uh, everything's precision made, beautiful finish. Really um, works smooth, fits tight, no shake or anything. So, you know, really nice job. And I love this little aluminum gauge that they give you. Again, it's uh, something about that black on white and it's font that they use that make it really easy for me to read. And then there is a bench block you can... I'll show you, you can screw this to your bench, but this is for setting up your angle. Now I'm going to grab a chisel that I, this is a new one of those uh, chisels I haven't used or sharpened yet. So I'm going to grab onto this one and see it's about a 25 degree angle. Which I actually call the plain iron angle, but you know, these are mortise chisels. So, and what you do, you push that up against the, um, push that unit up against the, uh, gauge there and you set it at the angle that you want you see each one is indexed there and you can if you're you can index it up against the left hand side there to um, make sure it's square but I found out that it came out square anyway and then you have to go through and tighten up the little thumb screw there make sure you're holding the chisel flat down on the thing and there you have it you're all set up ready to go Let's see, that looks really, really close to perfect. I know this chisel was a little bit out of square, so 
I'm just going to um, grab my whetstone, and this is the core side. I'm going to do a couple pass. Oops, our lights went out again. They're always going out anymore. Back on. Uh, luckily, they didn't stay out long that time. But ever since they started this green energy crap, um, our lights go out constantly. But anyhow, um, we're just going to do a couple passes on there. And I can see where it looks like it's squaring it up and doing a good job. Flip it over to the fine side. I like it's got the brass rollers too for being able to use with the water stones because that's what I use most of the time anymore. And do a couple passes on there. And actually, it looks like a beautiful job. It just uh, it's a little bit across. You can see how the chisel was a little bit out of square to start out. Well, the lights are out again. Back on. That didn't last long, but um, squared it up nice. Just hone the uh, blade there, and oop, it's actually razor sharp now. You know, it's a piece of birch plywood there, and cuts it like butter. So you know, I don't really like this. This is going to be used all the time. I guess I've always wanted one, but been too cheap to buy one. And look, it's got it perfectly squared up now. So I'm going to say that's a, you know, that's a real winner. Okay, just for the heck of it, I want to see if this will um, hold my 4 millimeter chisel, which that's one I use all the time. And, you know, it's kind of dull right now. It needs a little touching up. And actually, it looks like a 4 millimeter. God, oh, lights are out again. And they were out for four and a half hours. Uh, so here we are, four and a half hours later. Let's finish this up. And it looks like it will hold down to about a three and a half millimeter chisel. And again, um, you know, it's going to make it really easy to just touch up the chisels quick. I just uh, can't believe how fast it is to use. And we'll just hit it a couple passes on the uh, coarser side. <clears throat> And then we'll go over to the fine side. That that there, you know, about as narrow as you're going to get. But you really don't run into chisels much less than um, an eighth of an inch, which I think this will probably hit. So now let's see how wide it goes. I've got these old planes laying around that need to be restored, but... I figured I'm just going to grab a nasty old iron out of here and see if uh, this thing will go wide enough for it. So let's get the angle on it, and then let's open this thing up. Now, when you're going from one width to the other, it does take uh, quite a bit of screw in there to get it open, but you don't do this that often. And this is a two-and-a-half-inch blade, I think, so that right there is about the biggest you're going to uh, get into it. And again, it's really easy to line up, and I've got that kind of pushed up against the side there. You can see to try to make sure everything's square. Because it looks like this blade is out quite a bit, but it's also probably 80 years old or 100 years old. So, And then you'll notice when I go to put it on the stone that those wheels are almost wider than the stone. So that's not going to work, and that's why they give you a second set of wider wheels to swap out. It allows you to um, go up and use wider stones, and that that uh, hex driver is mine. It didn't come with it. The one that comes with it is a little bit slow, so I just went with, uh, grabbed the ball driver, and there you go. Once you put those wheels in, see how wide, see how it brings that down so it'll work with the stone. Well, this stone's not wide enough, but brings it right down. See, you now this is a nasty old plain iron. I'm just going to do this on a uh, piece of sandpaper on a flat block. I use this for roughing in a lot of stuff. So, and you can see, you know, it really does hold the angle and it doesn't slip or anything. It locks on tight. Um, somebody ground that with a round wheel last time, it looks like, but you can see it's perfect. And two and a half inches that was, and that's, you know, about the best width you're going to get out of it. So this definitely is another really um, 
high quality, nice tool. I love the little case and and there it comes with some screws even for bench mounting this block here. That's definitely a winner. And the last one is something that I've wanted to try for years, but I've been avoiding doing it because you need a special jig to put these hinges on. This is for the concealed hinges. And this is a standalone jig for drilling out the pockets for the hinges and the mounting hole. Now again, look at that high quality. Uh, everything's finished perfect. Um, all the hardware that you need to get going. And there's a little bushing guide for the drilling the screw holes that comes with it. And it even comes with a um, custom 35 millimeter bit that works with it. That's a neat looking bit, really high quality. Got a nice ground shaft on it, and I'll show you why in a second. If you look down there, they've actually got a roller bearing in this. Most of these things use like a brass bushing. This one's got a really nice roller bearing that uh, precision fits. So I guess this drill is going to have to be replaced with, you know, a going make drill if you have a problem in the future, but I don't see where you should. Then a little, little thrust washer you're going to throw on there, and then there's a nice stop collar with a set screw to tighten it. With a wrench that you need to set that, and this is how you set the depth of the hole that you're drilling. So, on the side of the gauge, there it is a depth gauge, and you, um, if I over tighten it, you just uh, use this to set the depth that you want for the hinge. Each hinge, I guess, is gonna you know come with the specs that you need for it. So, you set the depth and just lock that collar in place once you get it. Now, I don't have any hinges to try, but I'm definitely going to be um, going out and picking some up to play with. But it looks like uh, it does a perfect job. And again, really nice tight fit, precision. And then this locks in there to drill the holes and twists in place there. So it's perfectly locked in, centered, and uh, you know, everything else ready to go. Now, this is an adapter for a vacuum hose. I used it without the vacuum hose, and I'll show you what happens later, but I definitely have to uh, 3D print an adapter for my vacuum hose to fit it. I think this is like an inch and a quarter hose it requires. Nice clamp. It's got a nice swivel pad on it there. Easy to adjust. Um, those little bushings that are screwed in there actually set your back spacing and you have to look at the, uh, the hinge requirements. And so what you do is before you drill the hole, you set your, um, you know, you set this for the specs for the hinge and they go in from the back side and they set your distance from the edge for the center of the hole. So one on each side, you get two of them to square it up to the frame or the door nice. And then there's one more to set the three inch distance from the edge of the door to the center of the hinge. So that you have to move from side to side, depending on which end of the door you're working on. So that's it, you know, set, set them up, um, set this in place. And then you got to set the clamp to fit your door. You know, I'm kind of clumsy here using two, trying to film it. Um, but you just have to adjust that little clamp. Turn it out a little bit. Everything's always tougher in front of a camera. Oops, I missed on that one, but you got the idea. So I just have to shift that up a little bit. Got the clamp pressure, right? Uh, lock that down there and then tighten that up. So that's all set now, ready to go. So let's see, let's try this. Uh, we'll push your two pins up against the wood and then uh, the end pin will slide down against, lock that bit in place with the depth set. And drill a hole. Uh, drill seems to cut really nice and smooth. Um, it's not too aggressive on the cut. But one thing I found out is if you don't use the vacuum cleaner, like the instructions say, um, you get chips and dust in there so this is so precision that they won't let you take the drill out and unlock it 
So I had to vacuum it out to twist it. And uh, there you can see perfect hole. Really nice, you know, nice edges and flat bottom. So beautiful job. And then you use this, and this has to be set according to the hinge specs. There's four little bushings there that you can move to the different spacing holes. You can see you have four options, which should fit any hinge made. And then you just lock that in place. Drop that right in there. Fits precision and drill pilot holes. And be careful you don't drill through the other side. They even give you the drill with this. So this is pretty, uh, pretty exciting for me because I've always wanted to use these things and just didn't want to buy this fixture. Now I got it, and I'll use it. That's how easy it is to uh, to set them up. And then let's look at the other side. Let's see if we can do the other side. So what happens is when you switch to the other side, what you have to do is move that pin on the bottom there to the other end to set your three inches off the edge of the door. you got a top and a bottom setting there. And again, slide those two against it, and that end one up there. And you should have a vacuum in there, vacuum working it, because uh, I'll show you we got the same problem again, but it's not really a problem. It's more of an issue of not using a vacuum. And let's drill a hole, and I had to pull the whole clamp off again because he... Uh, the sawdust in that groove, but there you can see a beautiful, you know, flat bottom hole, clean edges, um, and all the sawdust, the fine chips do get kind of stuck in there. Yeah, it's just such a precision fit, you can't have it. it makes everything kind of, kind of stick. So you have to vacuum it out before you can put it back on there, and, you know, you can take it off. Put it back on and everything lines up anyway so see there's the size of my vacuum hose so i'm going to 3d print an adapter for it to make it work but you know in reality it does it does a perfect job and it really does work nice and you see the little thing there you can uh, line up on a line if you do so in the end you can see they're all really um really high quality made tools and stuff they do need a little bit of tweaking um a couple of them, as you saw, were off just by a hair, but, you know, it's all within woodworker's tolerances, I think. So I'm going to, you know, say that's, they're, they're probably good enough. They're not um, not quite woodpecker quality, but they're like one quarter of the price. So, uh, you know, that's up to you how much you want to spend. And that sharpening guide there, that thin rip guide, and that whole jig for the pinches, and this guy and this little guy are my favorites absolute favorites these i'm going to fix i'm going to narrow the bottom of them and this one here i probably would return if i had bought it because of that one that was out of square there's nothing that you can really do with it um and i don't know what their tolerances are but uh you know you saw it was just just that little bit too much for me thanks for watching please subscribe